You playing your theme song? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You know that's my little theme song. Right. <gasps> <laughs> it's all about love. It's yeah. all about love. Happy Valentine's Day for all the side chicks. This is your day to day. Welcome day. back. We are back. <laughs> we are back. We're back. Always on with Tanya J, featuring DJ J. U. Ice. Both of them are out right now. I'm taking over for the day because we're talking about love. I got my guests right here. I have Cheyenne Basta, our yeah. relationship coach right here. What's up? I have Samuel Rocksteady. Steady Rock. Samuel Steady Rock. Steady Rock. Steady Rock. Steady Rock. Steady Rock. <laughs> Steady Rock cool. Who is an artist and a rapper. I have my girl, uh, Chanel Red. Who's Chanel Blonde today? Uh, oh, I love the blonde. I love the blonde hair. I Thank love the you. blonde Thank hair. You. And I have Aisha White. White. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're going to be talking about love and relationship. We have one more guest that are coming in. That's coming in in a few minutes. Uh, but we're going to start this off right now. First of all, what is love? Mm. We're going to let Shine answer that. <laughs> Nobody want no part of that. <laughs> <laughs> What's love? Well, what one thing love? I do know is that love is something that you feel. It comes from the inside. It's honest. It's true. It's right. passionate, and it's something that can't be faked. So it's, it's definitely something that moves you to take action. Like, for example, tomorrow, if you're in a relationship, even if you're not in a relationship, if you had a desire to be in a relationship, one way that we, <coughs> we feel that we are loved is we express it. Whether you have a child that you want to express it to, it's an action, something that you do to make someone feel a certain type of way. So for all the people who are in relationships, make sure that you do something. It doesn't have to cost you a lot. Just do something to make the other person feel good. I believe that's love. Mm, yes. I think that's a great, great definition. Thank you. The way okay. you make you feel. Mm -hmm. I never really love. thought about it. Okay. All right. Is anybody in love right now? Anybody? Me. I'm in love You're with in myself. Love? I'm in love with myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in love with life. You know? uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> That's the most important yeah, thing. I'm what do you think love life. is? Oh, you was asking me? Yes, yeah, Chanel. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> she can answer that. Oh, you're not going to answer it? No. Okay, well, anybody else want to take a turn and sing? Take a I home? love me. That's what I'm going to say. All right. Well, I'm in a relationship. I love me. Okay. I, um, it was... I felt like it was destined for us to be together. Aww. We were together six years ago. Uh -huh. um, we were together for two years, and we fell out from each other, and we haven't seen nor spoken to each other for six years. Mm. And then 2020 came, he just randomly shows up and knocks on my door. Wow. I didn't ever think I would see this man again. Okay. Mm. So he wanted his old thing back, so I was happy. And I, I, was, I always loved him, so... Okay. I was happy. Well, I'm in love with myself, too, right now. I can find <laughs> love, I guess. We'll but it's see. weird because of uh, the thing, what he does. Everybody is a little. Well, what does he do? Family. He did porn. That's how I met him. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 All right. I did makeup for porn. Oh, porn. Yeah. okay. Okay. Well, that is interesting. Mm, that's different. <laughs> yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, different. Does he still do porn? <laughs> Um, not that I know of, <laughs> so, but that's how I met him. It was in, like, it bothers me. For a while it did. Uh-huh. And then I couldn't even watch his stuff or nothing like that. But it doesn't bother me anymore. How long y'all been together again? Now for maybe almost a month back together, but mm -hmm. we was together prior for two years. Okay. What do you think? Um, love is um, complicated, but I think love is like a, a, a multitude of things. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like you just gotta like enjoy yourself with love in the sense of like it can be complicated. Whereas though it can be some like you know in your situation where someone would think that was different or crazy, but I think That's how what makes, makes you makes enjoy you yourself is is what is love. It's like it can be crazy, it can be toxic, but if that what keeps y'all bonded, you know what I mean? I think it's it's important to go on that field. Because I think it's only one type of love is unconditional love. Right, so right, right. Whether you, because it never will keep you together. I don't think love will keep you together. I think it's the things that you do and stuff. And I think like all of those things like being in love and falling in love, I think that's like the drug of love. Like right. love should just be unconditional. So, you know, I mean, for me though, I'm not 
in love. <laughs> I'm single at this moment, you know. Right. But I'm loving life. I'm right. loving enjoying life, you know what I mean, and everything like that. So, I don't know, love is complicated, but it's a, it's a it's the one thing that makes you feel whole again. I, I'm gonna say that though, you know what I mean? Because people yeah. say like, love hurts, love you know would do this, but. When everything is all, you know, said and done, it's like the one thing that makes you feel whole again. So I think like cheating hurts and all of them aspects of is the, what hurts, you know, so. Right. Yeah, so. And well, let me just give a people. shout out to all the single people out here. <laughs> That's right. Uh, shout out to all them single people. <laughs> I was single long enough. that yeah. love is not the bad thing. It's not love. It's the people yeah. who make love bad. Yeah, yeah. But, but love is beautiful. Yes. It is beautiful. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who've been hurt mm-hmm. and won't try it again. And since your film, Pressure. Yes. My <laughs> film. yes. yes. Let's Definitely. talk about that anyway. Let's go ahead and talk about Pressure. Well, um, Pressure is about love gone wrong and what it's going to take to get it back right. Okay. Um, and and I, I guess I can attest for a lot of people who've gone through love situations who have lost out on great love by people doing crazy things or not even really understanding each other. And in this movie, um, it's more about getting to know the person that you're in love with. Because mm-hmm. people can... I, I fell in love with somebody and been with them for a day. Mm-hmm. because of the conversation, because of the vibe we had. And, and that one day turned into eight years. Wow. You know, that, and, I, and that happens to some people. But in this movie, <clears throat> this guy, <clears throat> most men, have this best friend who they know love them. They love them too, but they don't feel like they're the one and they still want to be out here um, dating other women <laughs> and doing their thing. But the best friend is still there. Um and he he has to realize before she is done with him, like, you're the one. She's the one. And, you know. Okay. So, let me ask you a question. What made you think of this movie? Is it about you? Um, A little bit of it is me. Okay. Um, Because I was in love with somebody, and I was his best friend, and we did everything together. And he loved me, too, but he still wanted to do his thing. But instead of him being honest about it... He did it in a sneaky way. Um, But I just came to a point where I was like, you know what? I love me first. Mm -hmm. I love you. I'm your friend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here and do it for you. But there were times when he would be flirty, Mm -hmm. doing all this stuff to entice because he know how I feel, you know, and it wasn't fair. I didn't think it was fair. So I finally was like, you know, bye. Mm. But this story has a different ending. Okay. As opposed to mine. So when is this coming out? Are you done? Um, we're gonna we're gonna release it. We have a little bit more filming to do next week, um, and we're gonna be releasing it in April. In April. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gonna How long is the film? Screening. Um, well, right now it's a twenty-four minute. It's gonna be a twenty-four minute trailer. Okay. The actual full movie will be doing that later. All right. Okay. But right now, what? based on How the trailer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our other special guest is here. Yay. Yes. Go ahead, take off your coat. Just get comfortable. Come in your seat right on over here. We're still talking about love and the film pressure mm-hmm. and everything. All right, so it's, so it's a trailer, you said. Yes. That's going to be coming be out. Awesome I'm coming trailer. to the premiere. You know I'm coming. Yes. I'm I'm, I'll be right everyone. there. I'll be right there. Okay. All right. And we talk about, a, you know what, too? The biggest thing is we talk that we talk about in this film is men wanting to know why do women, when they get with a guy and he just wants to have a good time, uh-huh. <coughs> have a good time, the night is beautiful, and whatever happens at the end of the night happens at the end of the night, but then the next day, all of a sudden, the man is my boo, you're my husband, you're my this, and they're like, why we just couldn't have a good time right. and let it be that, and if it goes into something else, so be it, but just let it be we had a good time, and not I'm, I'm not your man at the end of the day. Right, and I ain't your woman, because women right. do it too now. Yes. Introduce yourself, baby girl. Hi, sorry I'm late, guys. That's all right. That's okay. I'm Akisa. Hi, Akisa. How are you? And I okay. play Mandy in the film. That's right, that's right, that she's playing Mandy. Wait a minute now, she is a former member of the R&B well, no, not former, still a member. Still a member. Yes. Okay, still a member mm-hmm. of Allure. Yes. 
that is that was oh my gosh, y'all had so many great songs. Thank I you. would love to see y'all perform oh, again. Thank you. Hopefully soon. Yes. So, anyways, tell t- how did you get hooked up with um, the film and everything? Um. Well, I've known Chanel for quite some time. Chanel has written for us several times, uh-huh. um, and we finally met in person a few years back. And ever since then, it's been a sisterhood type of thing. And I've done videos for people that are actually involved in the movie as well. Mm-hmm. And she approached me a couple of months back, maybe more than that, mm-hmm. like last year sometime, and said, I have a role for you that I want to play, okay. that I want you to play. So I was like, okay. And when she explains to me, I'm like, hmm, right up my alley. Okay. <laughs> it, was kind of, it was kind of the story of my right. life. Like the character <laughs> was, when I say so relatable, uh-huh. that there was no way that I could say no. I mean... I think your this story right here is about everybody. It's yeah. some oh, yeah. part of everybody's yeah, life. It does. Actually, when you think about it, it's it, part it, of my life too, you know? It's, it's really going to educate women and men. Because okay. the women also, they come on and they talk about how with men, if you're just looking to, I'm going to use the word smash, because mm-hmm. that's what most men use when they are uh, just want to smash a woman for a night. If that's right. what you want to do, do Let it. Let us know that. Well, yeah, right. Netflix and chill. Um, <laughs> be open about it. Right. You know what I mean? Don't give women wifey time like you're cooking dinner and you're right. doing all this stuff when you know it's just, I just want to wipe one night stand or I just want to just chill for I just a need you to take the edge off and go about your business. Is yeah. that good? Yeah, yeah. I had that problem for a long time because yeah. everybody would say that, oh my God, you're so pretty, why are you single? Or a lot of people will want to be with you. I'm like, no, a lot of people lust for me. There's a difference. Right? You don't want me. You lust for me because I have certain assets, assets a lot exactly. of women don't right, have exactly. it they bought it. Exactly. Right. You know what well, I'm saying? It's so, the same thing, same thing. My whole thing is don't sit here and say, well, oh, I've been trying to get with you. No, you've been trying to sleep with me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The guy that I'm with now, he knew who back. I was, and he, he actually embraced the person that I am, and he loved the person that I am. And that's what he I think everybody is looking for, yeah. that unconditional love mm-hmm. from I somebody. Un- you know what? I want an unconditional friend. Yes. Right. I need that friend. He is my best yes. friend. He's right. my best friend. And he is also my lover. <laughs> I think I think sometimes like two. I don't know. Just in, but I want to like I mean yes, like no, we know like no. love don't keep us together like no, there's yeah. a lot of uh, you know ain't that a song that's crazy like you know how, <laughs> love don't keep us together <laughs> yeah like, I, you know so many people like <laughs> they together, like oh I was in love like I you know but then they get you know divorced or whatever so I think yeah. it's more of what you do and how you build on that is what you love like I always say like well. I can be with you today, right now, and then I may not be in love with you, but I know if we're working on things together, I'm going to love you, right. you know, because we building on things together. So I think it's most important. But even with that, I think even with what you just said, I think nowadays, I think because love, the word love and the idea of a relationship filled with love and commitment and loyalty, I think it's very scarce. So I think when you have somebody that can be that best friend, like you said, I want something that just has some kind of potential, so to speak. It can kind of be a thing of security in a sense where you don't have to have any high standards. You don't have to have high expectations of expecting too much from a person. If it is what it is, then it is what it is. But I feel like that's where both men and women make the, the they make the, what's the, I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> oh my God. They, they just make bad choices as far as like right. just telling a person what they want. You All right. I mean? Yeah, definitely. Good. I got a caller. Nigel okay. Hall. Caller, caller. Hello. Hey, Are you there? Hey. hey. How hello. are you? This is Nigel Hall. She's the CEO of Black and Blended. Hi, Nigel. Hello, Hi. Hello. Hey, what's up, Nigel? I can't hear you. Can you bring her up a little bit? Exactly. Blended and Black. Ble- blended and Black. Blended I am sorry. Black. I did it backwards. That's I did it backwards. Okay. That's somewhere dex- dyslexia or something like that? <laughs> that what it? Yeah, that's what it's called. But anyways, tell us about your um, your company. All right, y'all. So I am a master step family coach. That means people who come to me in some of the worst transitions in their lives, they are either going through a divorce or maybe they're remarrying, they're becoming step parents or they're trying to figure out co-parenting, which we see on Facebook. A lot of people just can't get right for nothing. And so I I founded a company called Blended in Black and now I have another company called VIP Stepmom. And all day, every day, I am literally talking to people, families that are trying to either come apart or rebuild for the betterment of the entire family system because let's put it out there the family is the most important system that exists right. before we get to the penal system the government system the school system what is it made of individuals that come from a family so i want to hit people right at the ground floor before they get out in these other systems and wreak havoc on the world 
Mm, that's Excellent. beautiful. And what made you start this business? You are you blended or black and blended? My my own damn life, did. <laughs> <laughs> my real damn life hit me so hard in the chin that I was like, I know this is not how it's supposed to go. I fell in love with a, a gentleman that was divorced. He had children from his previous relationship, and you know, j- just the typical stuff that that I'd heard about was happening and I was a single girl no kids of my own and you know I was just like my god it's not supposed to be like this so I started reaching out and just looking for avenues for help my parents have been married for 42 years so my mama couldn't tell me anything about this right my family comes from a long line of marriage I didn't know anybody personally and when I was looking online to be quite frank all the people that were giving advice on this topic they didn't look like me mm-hmm. and then if they did they weren't saying anything that was helpful or realistic i mean you had um you know mashonda and alicia keys of whom i've interviewed by the way oh, wow. but by the time this story <laughs> came out they had already made peace i needed to find somebody that was in them streets you know what i mean right right <laughs> i needed to find people that were in the thick of things and i just couldn't find it and what does a what does a sister do when she can't find what she needs she goes and builds so that's what i did i, I built blended in black with my very first community um that became it was an unintentional business but it's become a my one of my sole sources of income now i love it, it i love it tell us how uh people can get in touch with you well you look for me uh, my name is naja hall so all you gotta do is type in naja hall on the internet, and I'm everywhere. <laughs> it ain't hard to find. I make myself very available and accessible. N A G A N A J A N A J A. Yeah, N A J A. And if you're feeling real froggy, then you can just text me my number. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Blend. Wait a minute. Are, are you from New Mexico or something? Uh, no, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, okay, Memphis. All right. Okay. Memphis. I saw. I saw uh, the area code was kind of weird so i was like no 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 no, no. this is a i went to graduate school in dallas so the number i'm calling you from now uh but then my my business line is 315-75-BLEND you can text that y'all could call that you know if you're out there you sometimes people will text me randomly because i put my number all over the internet and i will literally sit and talk to them and help them you know so okay it's a soul work for me so what do you have to say about love and relationships for you know in lieu of uh valentine's day tomorrow so we're saying, well, you know what? Or uh, actually, for your uh, your um, caliber um, step families. Yes. So it's it's different. It's different because it, what I do in my specialty is I'm helping people in two different households try to find a way to make everybody happy. And the one thing I want you guys to recognize is if a person's not happy with themselves, there's absolutely nothing you can do. We're going into Valentine's Day, a commercialized holiday, or however you want to say it but it's still the day of love that we recognize here in the u.s so number one first i want y'all to just love on yourself that's right because if you love on your (laughs) damn touch yourself however (laughs) you see fit if you're not getting roses at your job tomorrow send yourself some roses that's right Mm -hmm. damn it send me some roses i'll send myself some roses go to walmart on february 15th and go get yourself (laughs) a bag half off and if you don't have no man get bob Right. There you go. <laughs> I, I treat myself every day yeah, for Valentine's. Yeah. Yeah. I would say self love is, and this sounds so cliche, yes. but um. really that's where it's at. That's where it's all everything that I do, every source of conflict that I see in my job every day is from people that cannot find it within themselves to love themselves. Oh, so yes. make my job easier and start to focus on you first. You said make what her makes job you happy mm-hmm. before you get in these relationships. I agree. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yes. Agreed. Totally. Thank you so much for your. What you got? So, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in, in the work that I do, I help people to focus on themselves. Right. And, you know, a lot of women, they say, oh, this is my last year being single. How many times mm-hmm. they say mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. at the new at the beginning of the new year? And so mm-hmm. what I help people do is I help people to actually set true. goals uh-huh. and create a strategic plan and take massive action towards that goal. So it's not just still on the line. Yeah, I am. I'm still here. What's up, girl? <laughs> Who is that? This is Cheyenne Bostock. Mr. Bostock. Yes! <laughs> I told you. You see how high my voice got high? <laughs> <laughs> she went straight to the So, so yeah. listen. Right. Girl, I didn't know you can hit those notes like that. I'm doing great. It's great to hear from you. But I, I like, mentioned like, you. We got to do something together, man. You know, you in a blended family. I got like 50 million women that want to meet you if you're still single. <laughs> 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 you're looking really nice today, too. Yes. And I know you're a little older now, so I'm going to have to 
so shoot. <laughs> He's blushing. He's I blushing. can't wait. To, you got to come in the studio, girl. You got to come in the studio. Listen, I need your energy. I'm, I'm going to segue right now. So Shop listen, the reason, <laughs> the, reason, I like the, re- the reason why I mentioned Naja, because, you know, I talk about goal setting and setting and and making a strategic plan and then taking massive action. And I bring Naja in right now because she's married. And what I will say is when a man says, I want to be married, mm-hmm. it, it happens. Right. There's not anything that's going to set him off that goal of getting that woman. Is that the way your man approached you, Naja? Oh, my God. Within three months of us just hanging really? out. They he already know. He knew. He knew. He knew. The first time he met he like, you. I'm going to marry you. He's... And we didn't get married for another two years after that. But, but he knew. You know, I was like. <laughs> he, he started literally putting things in place. Mm-hmm. Wow. He, he really did. You didn't have he to do anything. You didn't have to force him. You didn't have to beg him. Nothing. He knew what he wanted, and he went after it, and he set it up. Ladies, y'all can do the I same to thing. All do was be myself. You know, I believe in the first six months of a relationship, though, you're still dating each other's representatives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in that second yeah. six months, all the time. it's a definition stage. But where we all go wrong is we start to fall in love real, real, real fast with that person's representative. Mm-hmm. And by the time we, it's time to define this relationship mm-hmm. we're, we've gotten it all wrong but now we're already committed so we feel like we're stuck right. which mm-hmm. leads to the first marriage rate being divorce rate being 50 percent and yep. the divorce rate for second marriage being 70 percent because people don't know how to choose proper partners mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. he and i really took the time like we said it early on but then we really took the time to make sure and make a lot of mistakes Right. and learn one another mm-hmm. and uh, just make sure this is what we wanted. Take a step. I, I, I feel like you really don't know a person. You can know a percentage of them, but you really don't know, know them until you go through some right. crap. Some stuff. Yeah. Ooh, you know? and, and that's when that representative, exactly. yeah. that representative be playing on jump rope. Should I get back in or should I? But you know something? I'll say this. That's that's where that's where the strategy on your part comes in. Because us men, we are master strategists. We know how to get you out of all your clothes. <laughs> you know, that, that's a strategy. It's yeah. like you think we're a male friend and then all of a sudden we confess in our love. I put mm-hmm. our quotes on that. Yep. And you're like, I never knew. No, we knew since the first day we laid eyes on you. We've been strategizing from day one and you're just clueless yeah. after 10 years. And that's not good to be around no, somebody for so long I'm, and not I'm, know their motives. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why you need yeah. to ask key questions and be ruthless. And that's what I talk about in my dating manual for single women. It has 30 steps to take before a first date. And in that dating manual, you have key questions like, are you married? Have you ever been married? Right, Do right. you have any children? Right. Do you take care of your children? Yeah. Are you on child support? Do you pay your child support? All of these questions that a lot of women are afraid to ask but are damn near they're important. They're yeah. extremely important. I'm not afraid to Ask them ask before the first exactly. date, but there okay. are a lot of guys, there are a lot of women like for example a guy like myself. If I'm if I approach a woman, you know, dressed like this, fit all of this stuff, a woman is gonna now now this is my experience all my life. Like a woman, a woman will ignore all of the things her father taught her. All of the things that her brothers and it'll just go all out the window because they are all in love. And based off of all of the experience she's had with men before, for some reason, she just thinks I'll be different. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to get you out of your clothes, too. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but the smile and the suit threw them all the way off. But you still have to ask these professional men these key questions, too. You have to be a master strategist, ladies. Well, let me ask you a question. If you and I went on a date. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and I'm asking you some of these key questions. Mm -hmm. Do you think for a first date, second date, well, just a couple of dates in general, that me asking you, how many kids do you have? And you tell me you have five kids, right? You could be the most amazing man ever. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you're telling me on the first date or the second date that you have five kids is a turnoff. Now, I'm saying this because I remember having a little forum with four men. Mm-hmm. And they said people are very judgmental, which we are. We can be. And for me to, for you to say to me, you have five kids on our first date. I'm not even giving you the opportunity to let me know what kind of great man you are, because I'm focused on the fact that you got five kids, and you could have five baby mamas, and you could have all this drama going on. And but I'm not giving you the opportunity to know you, your kids don't have anything to do with it that you have five kids but most women shy away from that I'm you one. got three well, four five well, kids I'm going we're to shy knowing, away because I remember one of the guys saying to me him and this woman had mad things in common and they dated and once she told him 
that she had four kids, she it, the re- relationship went left, and he said she didn't even know the situation with the kids. The fact that he well, how long they dated? Her, I mean, they dated, he should have known for, the, from the job. well, this well. Is, he said they dated for three months, uh-huh. mm-hmm. right? She knew he had kids, <laughs> but he didn't say how many. Oh, she so didn't say she how didn't, many. She didn't do or do this. And diligence. she didn't say how many she had because she had three already. So they wow. just wasted they each just other said, time. We have kids, <laughs> wow. but because they were they were more involved in the, their relationship and how much they vibed with they, each other. They so they had they to work tell backwards. That. They were working backwards. They must have been texting the whole time. They must right, right, right. So, so go ahead, Naja. Mm-hmm. I was just saying, like, what type of relationship? They possibly have had. They must have been texting the whole time. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I was right. saying. That should have been right off the jump. Yeah. Because that's like the first yeah. conversation. Yeah. Here's, here's how I look at it. And you have to, ladies, ladies, you have to look at your relationship, like your dating life, like a business. So if you are a busy CEO, you're running a business, running a company, and you are dealing with the operation of the people who run the business, just think, do you have time to meet with people for meeting after meeting? Meeting is the equivalent of dates. So when a person schedules a meeting with you, you have to ask, what is the purpose of this meeting? Right. Why are we meeting? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the purpose of the meeting before the meeting, there should not be a meeting. If you don't know the purpose of the date or the person that you're dealing with, you should not go on the date, which is why I introduced that dating manual to save you ladies so much time because those questions should have been answered long before the date. If there's something that you have, and it's okay, ladies, to have a list of preferences that you want. This is your life. This is the person that you're going to go to bed with, wake up with, share your, your body with, your life, your family, resources. You need to be selective. So if this person does not meet your standards, if you don't want a man who has a child, I might not be the right man for you. It's okay. No hard feelings. You have a right <laughs> find to have man. standards for yourself may I, may, and may do not deter from that. I mean, Go ahead. You got to be selective as okay, well, too, nice. you know? Yeah. Okay. So I'll say this. I am not ashamed to say I, I, I was a single sex in the city, Manhattan, just constant hey. going out on dates, um, I you know, wish you no could have came so they could see how pretty you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was I was very free, and when I met my husband, we met on a dating website. Wow! And the, I tell a lot of ladies, like, there's nothing wrong with online dating. I tell people, as a matter of fact, I met him on the internet. And I, what I did in my profile, I wrote six long, lengthy paragraphs about myself. And some of the guys are like, hey, sexy, delete, block. <laughs> and I was like, Hi, how are you? <laughs> delete, right. block. But then my husband, he was like, hey, so I see that you're a firstborn. I'm a firstborn, too. Oh, twins run in my family. Oh, we're Christian, and I was an He wanted to conversate. Oh, he read mm-hmm. this so he actually wanted to conversate. So what I did from there, because like, like Cheyenne said, you know, it, it is a business. You're in the business of finding your life partner. And I was very serious about that. So then instead of giving him my phone number, I gave him my email. And so nice. we communicated on email for like a wow. week and a half. And okay. I was like, that showed me how consistent he was. Right. And I kept the conversation <laughs> very, very light. Okay. Um, I didn't go into those hard hitting facts. What's your credit score? How many kids you got? Right. This right. and that. I wanted to see, can you conjugate a damn conversation? Uh, verb? Can you use proper English? Are you going to hit me back? Or you're going to take two days and you're going to ghost me. He -hmm. did none of those things. And so then I felt comfortable enough to give him my phone number. We spoke on the phone a week, about a week or so. And then after that, I hit him up because that's my test. I hit him up. I was out one night with my homegirls. I was like, hey, you around? You available? And a man that is in a relationship or he's very preoccupied or not super, super interested in you, he ain't going to drop what he's doing. Mm -mm. He's not going to be able to drop what he's doing. So... I think it happened like the first time my husband was like, oh, I'm finishing up some work. I was like, don't worry about it. So I did it again and he was available. Now we were still talking on the phone by that point. And then when we met up, which was about a month after I'd met him on that dating app, um, the he night of our first date is when he told me that he had three kids. So well, yeah. this is a month that we had been talking. Mm-hmm. So we then, had met mm-hmm. very first time. And so I knew for a fact, number one, I ain't trying to be nobody's stepmama. I ain't dealing with no crazy baby mama drama. I knew all this about me. So when he told me that, I was immediately disarmed. So it was our first date. We went to a bar. I got so damn drunk because I was like, I'm not going to marry oh, this guy. No, he, he <laughs> yeah. You I let said, it all I'm out. Not, I'm not be with him. Yeah, I said, you know what? I can really be he myself. I got ratchet. I asked him to play my bar. favorite uh, Three Six Project <laughs> Pat you song. Drunk. You know, I was like, I'm doing the chicken head around the bar. And I said, he's a great oh fella, but I just don't see it. And so then he was dropping me off at home and he looked at me. 
And I was thinking he was gonna like, I'm thinking he's gonna say, man, get the hell out of my car. He looked at me, he was like, I just love your energy. He was like, I, I, he was like, you're just so uninhibited. Can I see you again? I'm like, Dang, I did all me? that. You still right. wanna see I, me? Wow. Yeah, I was, I you were your real ass, self. Ass. That's why you were real. That's why. I, I, when I say I acted an ass, which is really my true <laughs> self, um, that's what it screams. Exactly. And so, but my question is, later, did you tell I him? Say, I almost, I almost missed out on my biggest blessing because someone else didn't know what to do with it the, when they were giving it. Oh. And so I would just say, um, you know, when we're asking these qualifying questions, if you're going <laughs> to discount a person, I was 35 on my wedding day. So it's very rare at our age that, you know, you're going to find a guy without kids or that doesn't okay, have... Oh, definitely, definitely, you, definitely. That you're not going to have to make certain concessions for it. So I don't want anybody to lower their standards, but had that been my rule, I literally would have missed out on the best man that I've ever been with in my entire right, life. Right, right. I met dudes with no kids that would, you know, that was trash, you know what I mean? But oh. here comes here comes this daddy over here taking care of Miss Nausea and... You know, he, he changed my life in so many ways and vice versa. So, you know, we both had some things, some caveats that had we um, been forthcoming and had we stuck to our list, we would not have been together. So I would just advise people to, you really got to get to know a person's soul. Right. Got to do that before you start knocking off those things on your list. Because your list going to keep you single out here uh, in these streets. Right. And that's why I agree, kind of agreed with the guy who was saying from the gate, he didn't want to tell her from the gate. Because From, yeah. you did, did, you didn't even tell him. Those are disqualifying factors, right? Mm. Right. You know, like it's, it's different if you're not if you're gonna tell a person, hey, I have a terminal disease, or um, I'm about I'm a I have one of those too. Sex offenders list. Yeah, if, if I had one of those too. Something that's gonna affect another person's <laughs> life in a detrimental way. <laughs> right. or, or you know, I hear people nowadays transgender people are not telling that they're transgender until the person falls in love with them. Like, those are things that you those need are, to tell That's them. trickery. Oh, no. That's yeah. trickery. I asked right. them to bring baby pictures and, 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 and <laughs> right? pictures on dates. <laughs> I need to know what I'm help. looking at is what I, you started out at. That don't help from the beginning. Yeah. They'll bring their brother's picture yeah. and say, this is me. Or my sister's picture says, no, right, I, right. say, I know so I let, can let, tell yeah. the difference. I'm going to move it on here. Thank you so much for calling in, Nyjah. Thank you, Nyjah. Thank you, Nyjah. Thank you, Nyjah. Have a safe and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. You know, today is side check. Valentine's Day, so you gotta oh give it out there. Side, side, side check, side check Valentine's Day. Get Valentine's they get that day to day, okay? Side check. But anyways, I'll call and t- contact to tell everybody once again how they get in touch with you. So you can find me at NajaHall.com. N-A-J-A-H-A-L-L.com. NajaHall.com. And from there, You'll find all of my different platforms, but that's okay. my hub online. Now thank you, you so know. much, thank girl. You, thank it was you. very pleasure, nice. pleasure, pleasure. Thank, uh, thank you so much Nadia. for having me. I really appreciate y'all. Have you coming in the studio Happy next? <coughs> yes, you're definitely coming in the studio next time. Okay. I will be there. All right, I will bitch. Be there. All right. Have a great Valentine's Day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna keep it moving because we don't have that much time anyway. Do I have another call yet? Nope. Let me tell her to call right now. Anyways, we're going to talk about some Valentine's things and everything. We're going to move it over to Mr. S- Rock, Steady Rock. Sorry. Samuel. <laughs> Steady you Rock. Yeah. Call, call me Samuel. Hey, my mama named Sam. me that. That's, that's why yeah. I put Samuel there. I'm like, that's my name. Like, I'm, right, I know, yeah. I'm, I know I'm a Sam, okay? Yeah. Steady so, Rock is the rap name, but Samuel Steady Rock is the whole process of it. You know what I mean? Bro, they're playing real. your song right now. Tell oh, us about it. What is love? Um... When I wrote this song, it was like, I was, you know, I actually was like in like one of them situations where it was like toxic love, where we argued, but, you know, went back and forth. We ain't want to be with each other, but we was with each other. And, you know, I love, still love her to this day. You know what I mean? We ain't together or anything like that. But I think, you know, love is like, have all them dynamics created to it and stuff like that. So it wasn't really a song about like, like it's about more about all of the ways that love exists and right. like like I was saying this song like can we make love like is it really impossible to make love like we always say I want to make love to you so I think it's a creation of you know hey being it okay 
Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Rolanda, hold on a second. Go ahead. Finish no, the, okay. the, 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 in closing, like, I think the song is basically about is that love is really complicated and there's so many different dynamics to it and being in love is the drug of love and just love unconditionally. Thank you so much. But I like this jam, though. I really do. So we have my girl Rolanda Watts on the line right now all the way from Cali. Hey, Rolanda. Say hello. Hi. Oh hey, God. girl. How Hi. you doing? She's, she's hey, from, from Los Angeles. Yes, Hollywood. exactly. You must be having a good time, I'm sure. But anyways, um, if, for those of you all who don't know who Rolanda, Rolanda Watts is, she is definitely, if y'all remember Talk Show? Talk Show? Yes. Yes. That's how, oh, my God. I'm so shocked. Anyway, Talk Show host, comedian, author of Destiny Lingers. Rolanda Watts is on the line. She's going to talk about she's doing something else now. She's helping us people for Valentine's. Mm. What are you doing, yeah. Rolanda? I, I'm, I'm doing this fun thing. It's called Cameo. Uh-huh. And mm. it's and what we do, it's like myself, there are a bunch of you know people who you may know, you may see on TV or films. And what we're doing is this thing called Cameo. And you can go and you can have, you can ask me, order for me to do a special greeting for anybody to talk about anything. And it's Valentine's Day, and if there's that somebody you have a crush on and you're too embarrassed to tell them or you just want me to tell your lady love or your lady man how much you love them, then let me do that for you. I know you can do it yourself, but sometimes when somebody else adds a little flair <laughs> and fun to it, it, it'll be that much more fun. But I've done everything. I've done stuff for kids who just got into college and their parents asked me to give them a great greeting. People who aren't feeling well, we can cheer them up. People who just got married or celebrating something, or like we say, Valentine's Day, but any day. Okay. Go to cameo.com slash Rolanda. There you go. R O L O N D A and order your cameo today. That is right. So, what's hey. the craziest one you ever done, Rolanda? You know, the craziest, I, 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 well, you know, I do Professor Wiseman a lot, you know, because I'm Professor Wiseman. I'm right. George, so, sometimes I have to do it in my animation voices. But I think the craziest one was I'm um, Elawi, the champion on League of Legends, a gaming show, you know, one of those games. What? And I had to call, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the gamer, a gamer hired me to do a cameo for his opponent to tell him that he sucked at gaming. And, <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't, you know, I do these voices. I don't know much about gaming, I will admit, but I know the competition is stiff. And I let him have it. So you, sure you don't did. only have to send a cameo to people you love. I can cut somebody out for you. Too. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Oh, my God. Well, that's wonderful. So if you all want a cameo from Rolanda Watts or anybody else, just what, what is it again? Cameo.com slash Rolanda Watts. Slash Rolanda Watts. R-O-L-O-N-D-A-W-A-T-T-S. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you know you, it. Look, you know I'm gonna make it fun. Please. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, if nothing else, it will be memorable. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you can go over to Cameo. You can go to my page over there on Cameo and check out all the different kind of things that I've done um, for other people, and then that can give you some ideas. But yeah, but let's just make it fun, and it's something unique, and it's you know it's it's a great <laughs> gift, and it's. Nice. Something that, uh, yeah, well, I don't know, you can't buy that in a store. You sure can. <laughs> Something different, too. Yeah, right. that, something different, too. And that, that brings me to the next topic here. Traditional Valentine's, going out to eat and all that stuff. What's something new we can do? Well, I'm doing something new. What's that? I bought, uh, they have this Valentine's Day thing at Bayville Screen Park. It's a haunted house, the Valentine haunted house thing. And I bought tickets for me and my boyfriend and it. We get to go to two haunted houses and we get a three course dinner. Oh, nice. Dinner. That is different. Nice. You know what? Blonda, thank you. I'm That's sorry. Different. If you got to go, thank Talking you so much. I wanted to scare the stuff Hello? out of him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, she left us. Hey. Oh, yeah. okay. Hey. okay. If you oh, got to go, done? thank you. You're welcome. Love you guys. Love Happy you too. Valentine's thank you. Day, thank you. Thank you. You have a great voice. Thank you, baby. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Now. Here is something Ooh. new, and I'm glad that she brought that up. How about the ladies do something for the guys this year, right? I did. Is that not new? I, I, I appreciate that. I, 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 that. I, That's something new. Us I men, we, we are so not used to being treated. It's disgusting. It's, yeah. it's, it's disgusting. disgusting. If I had a boo, if I had a boo, I, a I would boo, do a lot of things. Like, I really, I, I, I went so far as this year. I, we wrote a song last year. But it's dedicated to men for Father's Day. Because men always get the 
bat sure. into the yeah. stick. Yeah. yeah. Father Christmas day, is Father's Day, day Valentine's Day. day. That's day. It. And it's All like, that. and this song is called Celebrate. And it's just like, I want to celebrate you, the man who already mm-hmm. knew about how to love me, but now it's my turn to love you right. and show you how much. I, but see, I think I think with Valentine's Day for me, uh-huh. I think when I was when I was a kid, I think I enjoyed it more having my mom because she was like my Valentine's. Right, like, my, my mom was my mom was my yeah. Valentine's. And she for a was that years. was the special thing for me. So for now, it's my daughter and my grandson. Mm. But I think when it comes to relationships, I think that's where we get it a little bit twisted mm. that we shouldn't have to rely on just this one day. This, like we said, it's, it's commercialized. Day. It's, it's yeah, a very commercialized every day. day. When you're in a relationship, you're supposed to be able to support your spouse every single day. Right. Mm-hmm. Whether he's having a bad day, she's having a Bad right. I think people again, people are <coughs> twisted. Like for him, you just said, like I want the you know the girls is something for the guys this time. That should happen every day. Every day. Because right. every if single not even every, a, right yeah, every yeah. single day, or if not, you know, whenever you can. Men and women both have their bad days. Mm-hmm. And me, I've just always been the type of natural woman, I guess, that whenever, if my man came on, if I was living with that person, mm-hmm. my first initial concern is, are you okay? How right. was your day? Exactly. I'm the one right. that massages the feet, I cook yeah. the dinner, I do whatever, and not saying that it was reciprocated. Right. I necessarily didn't care about that. Right. You know, because I just feel, I just feel like, I, I feel like women in general right. have this Touching thing where, toes. when it comes to relationships, women feel like we should have the bulk of that. And there's a very, there's a very, I might get daggers, but there's a very selfish mm-hmm. attribute when it comes to women, where women think that when it comes to love, we should be the ones that always get the attention, get the flowers. Well, I'm 50-50. Your man needs the same I'm thing. Definitely 50, I get, 50, I get the 50-50, really? but sometimes I'm we take it. 50-50. I get 50-50, but sometimes the women take it too far. Oh, yeah. That, these I think the millennials, take, right? Yeah. These millennials take it back. Not even the millennials. Even, yeah. even so women There's a hand clap generation. when you need it. Hey. Yeah, hand clap. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not even saying the millennials. I'm saying I'm 43. I'm saying I'm 43, and my mother, you know, obviously, but my mother was that woman who always wanted to show that affection and yeah, say he had a bad too. day. I'm gonna go um, get him some cufflinks, get him whatever, or just cook dinner. It's it's the simple things that right. might make a man feel like a man. Right. right. And I think right. that we, I think that we get it twisted where we feel like it has to be sex or it has to be this, it has to be that. It's not always a physical it's thing. Sex. Sometimes right. no Valentine's Men, Day gift. Yeah. Hey. Like at the end of the day, <laughs> we have to love one another yeah, every minute. single day. Right. So I think mm-hmm. women need to stop need to start separating themselves from this so called holiday when that should be an everyday thing. Right. Men right. need just as much as we do. Right, right. exactly. So, they need love. He did and, something and I'm very romantic. I'm very yeah. affectionate. I, I I'm very love, romantic. Boo. I love I think the best thing for me if I ever had a boo. Would be the him. On his face. Hold on, exactly. Would be him. Exactly. But I would love for him to, baby. I got your bag in this car. Let's go. Where yeah. we going? Right. I don't know. Oh yeah, I love I, a man yeah. that like to go. I like. I like exactly. Take control. Yeah. Take control. I think it's important. My thing too. is, yeah. he did special things for me for my birthday. So I was like, it was my first time really having a birthday, no drama. Uh huh. And he, when he, when we first got back together, he did what he could for me for my birthday to make it special before I went to Florida. Oh, wow. And I said, you know what, I know certain things, you know, it's cliche to get a man cologne or something like that. I found out the things that he really liked horror. So I was like, you know what, why don't I do something that I know he's going to remember and enjoy Mm -hmm. instead of just buying the typical cologne and that typical shirt or that (laughs) typical whatever. Find out what the person is really, really into and make it special for them. All right, so you know what? You know what? If you're in a relationship right now, would you settle for teddy bears? Look, you want to tell your man or your woman, look, baby, don't buy me that stuff this year, okay? So what be would creative. Be? be creative. Don't buy me no teddy bear. If you're going to buy a teddy bear, make, it, make sure it has bling on it or something. I don't know. Maybe a nice <laughs> I mean, star I'm, for because something. Of, I, I, I would say because of the age that I am. Oh, yeah. You know, that I'm not kind gonna, of stuff. I, that what am I doing with Teddy Bear? Yeah. Do it for me because, again, like you said, it's an everyday thing. It's about you know what I mean. And this time day time for me is just like an everyday it's, thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you like me, if you feeling me, then show that. Then exactly. just show it. Yeah. You know, I don't need the teddy bear and the, it's cute. Exactly. I'd rather but, walk with you in the park. Right. I'd rather yeah. us go and to talk. Love Jones together. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go exactly. to one of these places down here that have uh, uh, poetry readings right. or something like that. So like, I want to ask a millennial. Which is my daughter. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what do you do for Valentine's? What do you young what people do? What do you young people do for Valentine's? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you really want to know? <laughs> well, me, I'm very single, but 
around Times Day, I feel like other people they just go to the club or to the spa. To the club. Like get bottles and stuff. Oh, like that's what they do. You guys do spas? Or to like so They do spa. group on dates, okay? <laughs> exactly. Group on. <laughs> date <laughs> on group on. <laughs> that's what that is. Ain't yeah, that wrong with a group on day I though? Know at my job they're having like a three course meal, like something cheap. What's your job? Cheap? Central Park. I work I'm a server. Okay. So one of those okay well all right do y'all do you millennials still like slow dance no, no. that's my one hold on, hold on a second no, we, we meet the woo <laughs> you meet the woo what's that this new artist <laughs> this is new artist his name is pop smoke and this dance to it it's what's, a hip-hop what? dance so, no, they so y'all don't grind on each other doing. y'all just twerk well, we twerking we yeah basically like like right. um to a, a song that requires But they don't grinding. play Yeah, but y'all don't play songs, slow sex. songs? I'm talking about sex? No, they don't They don't know they they generation don't yeah. know nothing they about straight to it. Slow songs. Like everything the club. They go straight to it. You know? But but <laughs> their generation don't know nothing about that. Oh, <laughs> Not no real R&B. Real, exactly. I miss that. I miss that. When they play slow songs in Boys to Men, no. They have slow songs? Y'all grew up in 6 9 and Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Slow songs. T-Pain. Having a rush on the pain. Right. When they play slow songs, that means everybody has to leave the club. <laughs> yeah, that's it. X is left. When they wow. Start playing like that's Usher and all of that, yeah. that means it's time And then she brings yeah. Usher. Oh, that's wow. not even that. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. wow. 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 What, what's his name? Ursher. 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 <laughs> Somebody. I don't know. <laughs> all right, Cheyenne, we're going to bring it back to this love thing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to bring it back. So how does a single person find love or where? And then how do couples keep the love? You find love inside. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's looking outward. They ask me, where do I find a good man? You don't find a good man. You attract a good man by being a good woman. I tell women, you want to attract a rich man? That's easy. Start by being a rich woman. And you got him. No. It's like that. Start by getting your body Start done, by working in a strip club, <laughs> and being a bottle Listen, girl, because that's what all these mm-hmm. girls are getting. What do you mean by mm-hmm. start by being That I know. Start by being a rich. I'll, tell you, I'll break it down. I'll break it down. So, uh, there's a reason why you can't meet the homeowners because you're not even a part of the homeowners association High expectations <laughs> you know if you're a homeowner you'll be invited to where homeowners go if you're a business owner you'll be invited to where business owners go Would you, if you if you are if you are a marathoner you'll be invited to where these people it's a certain association with being that person so if you're like i can't attract a good man well where are you shopping at the dollar store because when i go to these fundraisers where they charge hundreds of dollars thousands of dollars to be there there's an <laughs> abundance mm. of single, women. single men and men women. Right. men quality really? single men abundant educated fit all of this and there's a reason why you can't find them because you ain't here honey oh. you're not here in this Tough. abundance environment so you need to raise your frequency I, I don't and know. it's really I don't that simple upgrade and there is a big difference between raising your frequency the reason why and also I say that expectation what's that i said there is a such thing as as lowering I just, you said lowering the, your frequency yeah no 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 you raise, your, raise frequency. your frequency but also lowering your high expectation because I, people have this high expectation where they feel like because of who they are they can get whoever and that's not the, that's not a fact right well at all. i believe that if if you are that person, let's say, for example, ladies, if you are a homeowner, you have a right to set a standard for a man that you meet to be also be a set homeowner. Set a standard, but not have a higher expectation of what your standard is. If that's what that's you want. I think we make big mistakes. If you are a homeowner and you're dating someone who has roommates, that's on you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's on you. Right. You are no, a homeowner, just sis. just take them out of those apartments <laughs> and put them in bigger houses. That's, you know, exactly. that's on you. Exactly. But, but notice, right. here's the thing. Here's the thing, us men, we're not doing that. We right. don't date down like that. <laughs> once we once we get a home, we don't we don't date down like that. Now play <laughs> around. Funny. Now play around. That's a different thing. That's what she was talking about. Right. Where a guy where you get your body done and all that. We'll play around with those. But no, we no, won't, no, no, we no, because I know a girl that's sitting in the house right now with a child with that person and all that from being a bottle service girl. Yes. So I don't necessarily yeah, yeah, agree with that. No, I, be, I believe you know, I believe okay, that. I they believe wipe that. these bottle fake Barbie Rock, looking fake, chicks take all she's the time. Fake. She's, she's yeah. absolutely right. I wanna, and what, that's the way they're looking. What that's I what they're wanna, looking at these What days. I want to say about sure that is, wife, you know? there is no real substance there. 
And so yeah, it will. Yeah, they still wife them. Yeah, exactly. Right. Let me let me explain girls this because burn water, can't cook. Let me nothing. explain this because there's take a lot all of women. Money. There's a lot of For women real. who envy those women, and I want to say, ladies, do not envy those women because no, those I'm, men, I'm, I'm, those I'm men, those those men, while they keep them as a trophy, they don't treat them like a lady. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah, respect no them. They don't right. value yeah, them. Say that again. Say that again. And they're not loyal to them. So say that yes, again. Say they got that the again. house. The lifestyle. They got the lifestyle. And this is why it's important, ladies, to create the lifestyle yourself. Right. Because when you have your own home, you have your own luxury car, you're able to take yourself around the world on trips, you're able to take yourself out on dinner, it's not that appealing and attractive when a guy approaches you with this stuff that you already have. Right. But when you operate from a place of lack, when these wealthy guys come to you and they take you out to dinner, you're thinking, oh, this is a treat. No, do it for yourself exactly. so that you'll see the trap. Right, exactly. Mm. Abundant exactly. women don't fall for that. I think it's the women mean, who operate yeah. from lack. I think most, in a sense, like when the men that may be attracted to that woman, maybe it's low self-esteem in that man. Definitely. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> definitely. Right. Definitely. 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 Absolutely. Definitely. 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 Love right. Definitely. It's a reflection of well, him. There's a whole yeah, lot well, of low self-esteem. This. this is what I get. Definitely. Because of the work that I do and I'm always traveling I'm always out doing things I chose early not to get a car not to have a car um, because I've witnessed many people people that I know close to me their family members have died from being tired driving and for what I do I like jumping on a bus I like jumping on a plane I like jumping in a Live um, or uber plane. or whatever and they're always like oh well why you don't have a car it's a problem coming to pick me up no it's not a problem I will it's meet you a great you. thing when we when when somebody come to me and want to go investment. go on a date and uh, let's say they may live in far want to meet halfway we can meet halfway you want to come to me come to me but the 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 thing is they always like well why you don't have a car and and they make it seem like it's an issue for them to come and pick me up hmm. and that's what i get okay well, or come or come to me where I am. Well, even if I had a car, I'm gonna meet <coughs> if I, my first date or something like that. I will meet you I there. Mean, yeah. I recommend or whatever. I come to my house. You know, right. I recommend that meeting. Um, yeah, they yeah. always want to come to your house. They they always exactly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Of course they do. It's up to you well, not I'm to let us. No, 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 no. I want. I'm getting the ones. Can you come pick me up from the train station? You don't want anybody to go drive in and stuff. Can you come pick me up? There's a yeah, bar right what? on the corner of my where my house is. And we go to the bar, I'll meet house, you there, and then you right take your house. Right. No, right. and then you let take me, your let me, butt let me, home. Let me add, let me, let me add one thing because but that's, what, that's what turns, go ahead. That's what, what turns me off. Like you, the wanna, right you want to come, you want to hang out with me. If you didn't have a car mm -hmm. and I had a car, right. it wouldn't. I wouldn't not date you because you don't have a car. See, this is why communication is so important. It's about exchanging value. On the phone, you need to be talking about the value that you're going to add to that person's life. Because after you pour so much of what you plan on <coughs> investing in that other person, they get excited mm -hmm. about figuring out how to get you from your house to the venue. Mm -hmm. But when you're just like, I'm a woman, I'm pretty, what are you going to do for me? He's not excited. He's mm -hmm. not excited, ladies. Mm -hmm. And you have to get this. You have to I impress me. You have Most to impress me. You have to impress me just as much as I have to impress you. I'm coming to the table with a lot. Right. So I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm going to say, this is what I have. And then I'm going to just sit back and wait and see what you have. And that's how I figure out whether or not this is. Matter of fact, I'll figure out where this is going to go. So, tell, so, so <laughs> It's going to go somewhere. I go Dutch when I do go you on my think, dates. Me too. Do I'll you tell you why think, that's a, uh, do you problematic. Do you think Dutch? it's wrong for... They pay me to feel like I, I shouldn't have to impress you. Say that again. I shouldn't have to impress you. Why to not? want to be with me? No, I don't. I feel like me being me, who I am. I don't know who you are. And what I, I'm saying, we're Get getting to, to know, know each other. But I'm mm -hmm. not gonna go out the way to impress you. I'm just gonna let you see who I am, what I do, what I'm about. And if that's not enough, I'm not gonna go the extra mile to impress you. Because guess what? Me going the extra mile to impress you, I ain't gonna be doing that shit every day. Now remember what we talked about. Now remember what remember we talked about when we said treat your relationship like a business. Right. How well would that work for you on an interview? Um, me me just being me. You not trying to impress. I'm gonna say this. The person. I've never. And I can speak, I'm my mother. I've never went to an interview to impress anyone. 
I filled out my application, <laughs> told them what I do. They asked me to come to the job. I did my job. And I feel you on that. Yeah. I definitely feel you on that. I feel, like, I feel, I feel like you when on you that. Say, when you but say me going much. the extra mile? Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, for an interviewer, it's different. But I'm when gonna, you're meeting I'm somebody, I think when you do too much to try to impress someone, that should be something that should happen organically. What is your... In, what is your... That's, interpretation. How I, hold on, that's what, what I mean. Hold, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. What is your interpretation of impression? Dressing up, putting on makeup, no, just, or anything? just doing too much talking about what you do, well, what you have, what when, they, No, 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 no. We talked... We talked... Like, okay, so I have my son on my phone. Mm-hmm. Like I'm proud of him. I would talk your ear off about him, right? And, and let you know, parent, yes. and let you know that's straight up. I have a kid, not, and that's my. I live in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn. He lives in Jersey. I have him on the weekend. It's been that way for the past ten years. Right. All of these things. So if at the end of the conversation you decide you don't want a guy with a kid, I'm like, oh well, because <laughs> the difference. With the, this is what a lot of women need to understand. A guy who takes care of his kid, mm-hmm. he is responsible. Right. right. And a lot of right. the issues that women are having in dating is they're they're dealing with men who are irresponsible exactly right. what about their parents what about parents relationships with their family and stuff like that does, does that have any play in you know? I would say it depends because sometimes we learn things from previous generations that were just wrong mm-hmm. yes poor money philosophies right uh poor marriage principles just poor and and sometimes like in in my case i say i learned from these previous generations and i decided i don't want to repeat right. those behaviors right. so right. i'm going to do my own thing my own parenting style and I'm my own saying, I, independent style a relationship with your mom some guys don't have a relationship with their mother what does that tell them? i would oh, i would treat your i mama would right you ain't gonna treat me right i mean now, some, i'm just saying some some it's, people don't have a relationship with their mother because something happened. I don't know. Maybe the mother was crazy. I don't right. know. It could be anything. Yeah. It could be maybe uh, the kid. Okay, so I have a... Or their father. I have, I have a nice relationship with my mom. It's not the best, but right. there's a lot that transpired in right. childhood. Not that I did, right. but it's some things that I didn't understand. Like, right. I don't beat my son, for example. Right. Right? I had... Most people in my generation, they got beatings. Yep. And I felt like... <laughs> I felt like... Uh, and I'm you know, and that, as a life as a life coach, <laughs> as a life coach, I apply this in my life. I feel like a parent should talk to their kids, right? That's the parent and that work beat that behind when they and need so, to have that behind. So beat. even as a kid, I was like, "Why is she doing this? Why isn't she talking to me about this?" Mm, nah, and so when I had a kid, I was like, "I'm never gonna do that." And so now, as an adult, she wants to talk, mm. and I'm mm. like. I don't you know. Now you, now you want to talk. <laughs> but that's because she figured it out later. Yeah, right. She figured yeah. it out later because that's the same thing with my father. Mm-hmm. My father figured it out later. Right. But right. not necessarily to have a greater relationship with me. We had a good relationship, but he made it greater with my kids. Mm-hmm. My my grandkids. Right. right. That's there real. He's like, like, I, I right. didn't do it with you, and I see you already setting your ways, and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, daddy, whatever. Right. Um, but. My son and my daughter and my grandson was a different story. How he communicated, and how he talked. My mm-hmm. mother too, you know. But yeah. yeah. But I, right. I think I, just, I think it just comes with understanding, like the same way he just made the example about you know having a son and not having a, a stupendous relationship with his mom, but having a good one. Having a relation, a good relationship with your mom and your dad doesn't necessarily mean that you're broken or you're damaged. So if he had a bad relationship with his mom. That would probably give him more of a want to want to be that much more special as a man for Right, not with. repeating. Right. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that because you had trauma, right. you're going to repeat it. Right. And that's right. where people get it twisted. Right. You think, oh, because you had, and that's, that's what scares people off. Like that, even when you say, like I had a situation with a guy that I was completely in love with. Uh-huh. He had four kids uh-huh. from the same person. But because he lied about every single thing that was happening in his life because he thought that was going to be a turn off to me. Mm. And I found out after... I stopped the relationship because of the lie, not because right. of what he, you know, what right. he said. Right. I was accepting right. because he was an amazing man. Right. You so he didn't give you a chance of thinking that somebody's yeah, going to say, what I mean. oh, he didn't give you a chance. Judge exactly. That so judging. Yeah. 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 He judged himself. Cool for like, nah, exactly. you know, it's important like to just, yeah, you know, exactly. I don't got no game. Just, yeah. you know, this is my story. Right. I hope you exactly. understand it. Right. And that comes, that comes from being confident in who you are, period. Right. Right. That's I've always Person been. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. I don't got no game. Just understand I don't my game. story. Look, this is who I am. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is who I am. This what is who I am, and that's that. Like, it is what it is. And that's yeah. and people, I want you to say and that should be amazing enough. That is amazing. Exactly. You and that's how yourself. But, but people, yeah. people, people are looking you, at the people big fake boobs and like, the 
and all you that other stuff. You are the worst person yeah. in the world exactly. just being who you are. Right. Oh I mean, God. don't come to the date with no lotion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come on, come on, do something, do something. Come on, right. clean yourself up. Yeah. No, we're you gonna know, come. I should be a part. Come on, I'm not. I'm not. Like, 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 right. right. We're gonna no, come boy, presentable, so exactly. of course. Yeah. yeah. But right. the man too, because yeah. I've been on dates with dude just cam looking like I'm like oh. Oh no! This is my chance. This is, this is my chance. Right, right. <laughs> this I'm is why I, I, I do. I've, I've did the online dating thing, and my first thing is we gotta FaceTime before I meet you anywhere. <laughs> okay? I don't know if you a nut. I don't know. Nut. I need to know who you are, I and mean, if you you're not catfishing. Anybody. Catfish he's the same way he's sitting right here yeah, right now. You be dating for three, four yeah. months, and he could be the same exact person. And then four months down the line, he changed. He's, his representative. Yeah. Is my thing is, I want to first and foremost. Women take looks, I need to move. know if it's you. Right. All right, I've been make catfish lashes. like three times. Oh fake butts. They take. They change. Okay, so <laughs> thank God, I don't. I don't, I don't, I, I don't have that. I don't. My breasts don't pop. We got, see my we got a lot more to worry about. This is what than my mama gave in this me. LGBTQ what era. <laughs> yeah. We trying to figure out if you a real woman. <laughs> and, and that's true because I get asked all the time. Right, right, right. I get asked all the time if, all right, right. I get all the time right. if my and butt is real. Right. I get that asked every. Every time like the really? is, facts. I get it asked okay. every really? time. They asked me, and my butt is real. What did I get it done? I said genetics. Oh, <laughs> I, what? It's it's a real my butt just sits high. And that's like what I'm talking about. Those guys. So we're gonna stay away because, from because they think a real a real butt is is it's low. No, it's not no. as high no. as mine. Go down like south. No. You'll see all them cornbread booties. Right. Down there. But that's the thing. Okay. We ain't down south. We up here. Yeah, so that's they true. think that <laughs> us up here oh, ain't oh. built like that because most of these women are getting their bodies that's done so frequently. Right, it's like, right. it's yeah. just yeah. like, you never yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You know? All right, so we're going to wrap this show up. Crazy. I enjoyed every yes. single one of y'all. I wanted to say and give some shout outs, actually. <laughs> give some shout outs to all the guests who are online. We got here, let's see, Sarah Taylor Campbell. What's up, girl? Deborah Vaughn, hey. And we have some El Quana. What's up, girl? How you doing? Patrick, you're coming on the show. You know that, right? Anyways, um, <laughs> oh, Chef Jesse, you're definitely coming back on the show. Pow! Bring some food. Yes, Chef. right. Please, <laughs> please. And Norm, if you're watching, I'm shout out to you, too, and Norm. everything. Hey, I'm Norm. Definitely, Storm Norm's going to be out. I'm going to be out there, too. I'm going to have two studios out there and here for people in Jersey and for people yep, in New York. That's what I'm And everything. But anyways... One last time before we get up out of here, tell us who you are, where we can contact you and everything. Uh, let's start off with you, Aisha. Well, I'm Aisha. I'm actually a cast member of the movie Pressure. I play Trish, which is the girlfriend to the player, Eric. And you can find me at Lady, L-A-D-E-E underscore E-S-H-A on Instagram. All right. Chanel? Oh, oh go ahead. Great kiss. Oh, me? Yeah. Um, Akisa Mendez, uh, one third of the member of the group Allure. So first and foremost, you can find us at Allure World on Instagram. My personal page is Finding My Purpose 10. Um, Allure, uh, I'm sorry, Official Allure on YouTube. And you can also find us at Allure Live on Facebook. And also at BKS1 every Thursday night with Storm Norm the General on the Storm Morning Show. And that's it. No, you got to talk about your acting? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. And... Pretty soon you can see me as Mandy in the in the, uh, the, the short film Pressure, which I'm very, very excited about. Yeah. I hope that you guys can just definitely follow Chanel Red, follow everything that she's doing. She's just a giver, and I just appreciate her for giving us the opportunity and trusting us in these roles, and I'm excited. Yeah. All right, all right. That's a hand clap. Wait. <laughs> All right, Sam. Samuel Steady Rock. Um, you can check out my music on all streaming platforms. It's Samuel Steady Rock. That's how you can look it up. My website is SteadyRockLife.com, and that's Steady Rock Life, and that's without the K, because it's grown-up stuff. You know what I mean? So Steady Rock Life. Steady Rock Life on Instagram, SteadyRockLife.com. Samuel Steady Rock on all streaming platforms. Um, it's grown-up music, and I, you know, hope you appreciate it. You know what I mean? So it's we a need grown some grown-up music because I'm hip-hop. tired of six yeah. nine and <laughs> six nine. Oh, he ain't putting nothing out now. Oh, he ain't putting nothing out. But he, that's this he generation. Snitch. He's he getting out. He snitch. It's just it's snitch just, man. That's his name. New six nine snitch. He, he ain't gonna go into the lap. But I'm just saying we need real music like back in the day, old school. Yeah, music. definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, Cheyenne. 
First of all, thanks so much for having me on the oh, show. You know, you my man. Yes. Uh, my name is Cheyenne Bostock. You can find me on at CheyenneBostock.com. And I just want to let the ladies and the gentlemen know that the answer to your dating life, your relationship, your business, it's not out there. It's inside of you. Thank you, Jesus. And that's something that I love pouring into people about helping them to set a clear goal what is it that you want out of your dating life out of your relationship out of this world and create a plan and then once you do that take massive action towards that one thing until you get it you, you gotta and if want you it need help reach out to me at cheyennebostock.com i'm here to help you yeah. You'll definitely help you that's for sure <laughs> anyway uh chanel I am Chanel Red. You can reach me on Instagram and Facebook, Chanel Red. Um, I do a massive amount of things, but right now I'm currently working on a independent film called Pressure about love gone wrong and what it's going to take to get it right. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the soundtrack. Um, oh, I am so excited it's for the about it. Girl, you know I love that music. And for those of you that are looking to look at the movie and, and get to know the cast and the music, you can go on Instagram at Pressure the Film. Yes, all right. Oh, and also, I enjoyed name, everybody everything. Everybody spells your name wrong, Chanel. It's not Chanel like the bag. It's S-H-A-N-E-L-L, Red, R-E-D. Right, there you go. There you go. All right, so I appreciate every single one of you all coming out here today speaking with me. Of course, you can definitely catch us on Facebook and Instagram at TJ Always On. We're definitely on TJ YouTube. Always on. Always On with Tanya and Jay. We're definitely everywhere, every platform that you can find, Apple, all that. We're there. And we'll be back soon again. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying right now, all them side chicks and side men, your time is almost up. The real Valentine's about to kick in. All right? Awesome. But beware, hey, the, beware because some of them share the day with the side Love chick and the wife. The, hey, there, there you go. That's what I'm saying. And the man. If it's a threesome, and the man. Like, <laughs> boyfriend. But I love y'all. Take care of everybody. I'll see you next week. We're going to be on, on um, sometime next week. I'll let you know. We're talking about Kobe. You know, they're getting a God bless Kobe. We love you, family. Kobe. God, God bless everybody who was on that plane that lost yes, their life that day. Families. But we'll be live again next week with Kobe Sucks. Thank you. 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 Take some pictures. All right, yes, we gotta take some pictures.